Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you all. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Global Guides podcast. Uh, my name is Tom Phillips. I'm a National Alliance Manager for Safeguard Global. And alongside me is... Mark Robbins, and I'm the VP of Sales for our Global Employment Outsourcing Solution in EMEA. Um, so just to give you a quick overview of the, the company that we work for, we work for a company called Safeguard Global, as we both mentioned. Um, and they have, well, we have two solutions, um, one being an employer of record solution where we can employ people on behalf of clients that don't have local entities. Um, and then alongside that, we have our global managed payroll service, which is a, a global payroll solution for companies that have um, headcounts in countries with entities and are looking for streamlining of their data um, and potential integration with their standalone HR systems. Perfect. So... What are we trying to do? We're doing, uh, over the next couple of weeks, a uh, podcast with regards to, uh, and chatting to various uh, industry leaders, should we say, industry con connections that we have uh, to talk about them, their company, what's happening right now with them, and what's happening in the future. We're going to have a bit of fun and games, and hopefully you'll join us throughout. So, uh, welcome to Rob Chambers uh, from m and uh, Thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, we'll dive straight in and say, tell us about yourself, Rob, and the company, uh, Miller Champion Hall. Uh, hi, guys. I'm Rob Chambers, uh, the owner of Miller Champion Hall. Uh, we are the uh, producers of the finest handmade cricket bats. Um, I've been involved in the business for... Well over 20 years now, and um, I've seen it kind of grow year on year. And um, yeah, I'd like to think we do quite a good job. Perfect. Um, and how's your business at the moment with everything that's going on? Are you finding um, like sales or, or lower? I know when I met you a couple of months ago, you were driving or you were traveling to Cambridge, I think. Um, so I imagine a lot of your sales are on the road. So with you know, restrictions and stuff, have you had a, has that had an impact on you? Look, I think the same as anyone else, our, our industry's been hit pretty hard. Um, cricket's obviously a, a summer sport um, and our season was due to start a couple of weeks ago. And unfortunately for us, the, the corona sort of virus has, has struck us at the, the sort of worst possible time. Um, it's when we would expect the, the highest sort of volume of sales. Um, so we, we've taken a hit, but... Um, we, we are still sort of hopeful there will be some cricket play this summer. Uh, hopefully, we should see a spike in sales when, when and if we're given a kind of green light. Um, we do have internet sort of arm of our business, which is still ticking over. So that, that puts us in quite a good position for, for sort of when things hopefully go, go back to some sort of normality. And have you then had to change your business strategy as well because obviously as you said with regards to making the finest cricket bats which um i can uh, put testament to to say that uh, to say that they are um you you obviously have other items and, and and i'll ask you to sort of list through exactly some of the some of the stuff you you do do but have you had to change your business strategy on advertising those certain items and and how you go to market yeah, I suppose, like everyone else, we've looked at kind of the fact that the majority of the, the population are at home. So we've really had to sort of nail down our sort of product list and look at those sort of training aids and those type of products that, that people could actually use at home. Um, so we've really concentrated on marketing those. Uh, we were already quite big on social media. Um, and this has just enabled us to kind of increase kind of um, our sort of output and sort of really engage with our customers. Um, so for us, it's really important that we use this time to sort of actually learn a few lessons and actually sort of um, come out of this sort of, you know, in a, in a sort of uh, much more sort of positive way um, and actually capitalize on, on the situation. 
you know, unlike some other businesses, you know, we're actually investing at the moment. We've just bought a, a new sort of commercial property. Um, we're going to actually use this time that, that sort of um, we're not sort of interacting with customers in the store to actually expand our store and uh, sort of do some sort of home improvements, if you like. Yeah, and I think we've uh, great. Great. in the past, it seems to be a um, similar theme where people are looking to upskill and, and change what they already have or improve what they already have. Uh, yeah. hear you screaming in the background there. <laughs> <laughs> I think kind of I think it's important to be op op optimistic I mean kind of one of my sort of feelings is that you know when we we sort of all of this is over then um, people will be really looking at sort of companies that that have survived and that have done well um, and I think kind of everyone likes to sort of back a winner to a certain degree um, so I think it's kind of really important that that you know you you basically um, sort of really focus on on sort of being successful and making your sort of customers sort of confident that they're buying into you know a brand that's not going anywhere really yeah for sure um have you had any impact sort of on the international side with your sort of orders internationally or if you have any um you know representatives or whatever internationally has that had any impact with what's going on um I didn't quite catch the first bit, but it, was that about right. our sort of international sales or? Yeah, has that been affected by anything that's going on just in general? Yeah, look, I think our sales across the board have, have been uh, hit a little bit, to be honest. I mean, nobody's playing cricket at the moment. Um, I mean, one of the things that we really need to think about is um, who's going to be playing cricket when... Um, the sort of things get back to normal um, so it might be that we really target the southern hemisphere um, look at places like Australia um, obviously places like India they play cricket all year round so that's a good one that's a market yeah. that we're really exploring at the moment that, that's that's good and 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 obviously you know we've spoken previously with regards to an, an, an India project that you're looking to do and 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 that's quite interesting with with focusing on the southern hemisphere um, and when you say, obviously trying to capitalise on sort of your players, I guess that are going to where you know where where are they going to be featured and where where you're going to be, I suppose, where, well they're walking advertisements for you. So just explain how many players have you currently got on, on the books, and and a lot of them are all in the county championship here in the UK. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. So so we've got about uh, forty players uh, currently on our books. Um, and they range from sort of England's Jack Leach uh, down to kind of the up and coming sort of academy lads that are, that are knocking on the door and, and the next big thing. Um, some of our players are sort of playing in tournaments all over the world, which is fantastic. And we tend to find that, that the sort of sponsoring professional cricketers, that there's a domino effect once you get to a certain level. You, you sort of create your own sort of um, kudos, really. Um, so we're now finding a, a, a sort of higher profile of pl player sort of contacting us for sponsorship. Um, and that, that's fantastic. Um, higher caliber players mean, mean sort of greater sales, really. Yeah. yeah, I suppose it really boosts the exposure, doesn't it, with people like Jack Leach um, using your bats and, uh, and representing on a global scale. Um, right, so yeah, I, think... I mean, sorry, go on. <laughs> I just some of his cameos during the summer were just the reach was incredible, just that ridiculous. So yeah, it, it does really pay when when it comes off. One of these guys does something sort of memorable. You know, it's it's good business. Yeah, I think that whole summer. Um, really put a bit more light on cricket in general didn't it because not being a massive cricket fan myself or not knowing much about it I actually started to watch some of the Ashes afterwards and getting into trying to understand it a bit more um, just from the success we had and you know everyone talking about how good and great it all was yeah I think look it, it's it's kind of it did, did change the industry to a certain degree there was a there's a huge buzz at the moment around cricket um, and I mean, I suppose ever ever since 
cricket became a commercial entity, you know, it's grown year on year. And the big money tournaments now, I mean, money talks, that's what excites people. The more of those, you know, the bigger I see cricket sort of growth, really. Um, especially in countries like the USA, um, that's probably the, the, the quickest growing market. Okay. That, yeah. That's quite interesting. So when you said the quickest growing market, but because, and, and how is that growing? Because obviously they don't have a, and, and this is, um, I'm not aware of this, they don't have like a national league or anything at the moment, but do you find that that is something that's being developed? It is, yeah. The r- rumours are that they're spending millions of pounds on, on the infrastructure at the moment. Um, I think kind of the ladies games, one thing that they're concentrating on. I mean, there's an awful lot of kind of expats in the USA and they've created pockets um, all over the country and they, they do have their own leagues. One of the difficulties is grounds where they can actually play. Um, there's also an, a lot of kind of um, big money tournaments in the USA and those are becoming kind of more frequent. We actually have a visiting USA kind of youth side that visits our, our sort of uh, Southwest tournament every year. Um, and that seems to be getting more and more popular um, with teams from the USA. Interesting. I never thought um, the USA really had an interest in cricket. Um, so great to see that they have. Yeah. It's uh, to be honest. It's it's mainly I think kind of the Indian Pakistani communities, um, but it's kind of yeah, it is growing. I think t- things like the T Twenty tournament, which are quite short and exciting, I think that kind of um, that could kind of um, help the growth of the game. Yeah, it's definitely like you said that. Well. We'll see on a on a. Yeah, four-day games are a bit dull. That, I mean, they're, at the end of the day, they're probably not exciting enough for for the masses. Um, you know, they're great to go and have a beer in the background, but, uh, you know, do some business in a box. But actually to sit there and watch for four days is, is, is hard work for anyone, really. <laughs> So before um, Mark uh, starts a little bit of some fun questions for you, just on the business side of things, how do you think then, with regards to obviously the the industry that you're in, with regards to obviously the sporting world, especially with cricket, but obviously you're a you know, manufacturer as well, how, how do you find the industry will be, or how do you think the industry will react to obviously once post-COVID? And also, how is your business strategy going to change you know with regards to you know new opportunities to to get mnh continuing to be on the map yeah i think look i think most industries and certainly anyone who's in retail is is going to be looking at kind of discounting you know it's going to be a rare beast that doesn't have to offer incentives to to get kind of public buying again um as i've mentioned before we're kind of hopeful that there's some light at the end of the tunnel and that we will actually get some cricket this summer so i can imagine a kind of peak of sales as soon as people are kind of allowed to go back out and play sport i think you know for the majority either watching or playing sport is such a big part of their lives that um you know i don't think it's something that they're going to kind of scrimp on i think they're always going to kind of spend money on equipment and kind of playing and you know whatever capacity that is i mean some industries some sporting kind of um uh sort of areas would have done very well actually in in this crisis running for example i imagine trainer sales have been pretty high because everyone's out there doing their kind of daily exercise. So, so anything that's an individual sort of sport, you know, they're probably doing quite well. Um, unfortunately, you know, cricket is quite hard unless you're extremely wealthy and you've got a kind of net at home. It's quite difficult to kind of, um, you know, train on your, your own as well. So, um, you know, I think for us kind of our strategy is going to be kind of offer great incentives when we, we get back to normal um, and focus on overseas markets because really the UK season will be ending as, as we come out of this. 
Um, but in places like Australia and India, you know, they'll be just sort of starting. So I think that we will ramp up our kind of um, sort of efforts to, to sell into those countries. Um, might even be a trip or two in the, in the offing for me, which would be fantastic. Nice. Sure you yeah. enjoy that. Perfect. Um, so moving into some slightly less uh, serious questions. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Um, as a man that appreciates a beard, I wanted to start by asking how long you've been growing the uh, the isolation beard, if you trimmed it, or um, what the strategy is with that moving forward. Um, the strategy with the beard is to kind of leave it. Um, I've been growing this one for a couple of years, to be honest, pre pre virus. Um, I'm quite lucky; it grows into itself, so it's an easy it's an easy beard to maintain. Um, also, the hair on the top's getting a bit kind of thin, so. If I need a transplant, this yeah. this will have to do. <laughs> good, good. Um, so, what profession, uh, other than your own, obviously that you're doing, do you think that you'd like to attempt if if you could? Uh, look, I think that's an easy one for me. I mean, I'm constantly getting bossed around by professional athletes, and uh, you know, for me, it's an obvious one. I'd like to also be the professional athlete. <laughs> bossing the bat maker around um you know i i kind of i do idolize some of these guys i mean you know just natural ability you know being good at sport i mean it's something that i've always strived to be good at but just i just haven't got that sort of flair um so i think yeah i'd love to kind of uh i'd love to be a professional cricketer or or a footballer or an athlete of some description. Yeah, wouldn't we all? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is it. Maybe not on the rainy day when you're sat in the changing room, kind of uh, on the on sort of board, but uh, but yeah. <laughs> um, so that kind of leads into my next question. Um, can you name three people that have been influential on your career? So they could be professional cricketers, they could be your dad, um, you know, anyone that you've, you've could pin has influenced your career so far. Okay, that's it's quite that's an interesting sort of question. So, <laughs> so the fir the first one is quite random. Um, when I was kind of about 16, 17 years old, uh, we had a backpacker came to sort of live in our house for six months, an Australian chap. And I think that meeting someone at that point in your life who's quite influential and sort of someone you kind of look up to, he kind of taught me to sort of open my eyes and sort of made me realise that there's a big wide world out there. And I think kind of it's quite a sort of key moment for me, really, to kind of realise that, you know, where I was living, what I was doing is just such a small, minute kind of thing. And that actually, you know, you can do anything. There's a big wide world out there, you know, and I just kind of really admired this guy and thought, wow, you know, that is, he's free, he can do this. So I think that was kind of probably the first person. It's when I w sort of woke up to the big wide world. Yeah. Um, someone else, a chap called Sachin Tendulkar, who is arguably the world's greatest ever cricketer. Um, I made a bat for him in the late 90s when I was an apprentice bat maker here. And I kind of, to kind of make a bat for someone that famous and then to, to actually say it was good was probably kind of that point where I realised, you know, I actually do know what I'm doing. So, and it kind of gave me that sort of kudos really. And it's, I probably dined out on that every day since <laughs> for every anyone who kind of listen um and then of course yeah i think kind of you know i think my dad i think everyone's dad's their sort of hero to a certain degree you know i think part of my dad helped me um be sort of rounded um and again just sort of there's no better sounding board than your father even though most of the time he's you know he's telling you your ideas are rubbish or you know you've got that wrong you know you need that in your life that stability that sounding board and especially in business because you know you 
everyone's got their own idea, but then there's very few people that you trust enough to kind of to make those big decisions. And, and, you know, I think my dad's, you know, that guy really. Good, good. Yeah. Well, a couple more that my, my one I've been wanting to ask you is obviously with, um, with you having M and H and, and, and it being advertised and, 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 being the finest bat maker, uh, personal opinion, or uh, in the UK and globally, um, that I would uh, personally, for me, obviously in knowing you for for a long time. But do you have two memorable moments that you have been that you've seen where you know your M and H brand has been on show where you've gone? Oh, do you know what these are emotional and and brilliant times like inside? Yeah, I suppose it, it's quite an odd one when you kind of own a business like this. And I suppose it's the same for most business owners. You don't really ever sort of sit back and take stock of kind of anything you've you've done. You're just in the, the moment all the time. You never really, it's only when other people kind of point things out to you and say, oh, you know, you've done this and you've done that. You don't you don't think about it. But I suppose two, two really pinnacle points for me. Um, one was a chap called Nick Compton, who basically batted at three for England uh, in in the sort of test match. Um, that was kind of, ever since I've kind of owned Miller Champion Hall, my sort of dream was to get somebody sort of using a Miller Champion Hall cricket bat in a test match. And because we're... We're a bespoke company. We're a specialist company. It's extremely rare and unusual to have a, a boutique brand like ourselves, sort of in the in in a competition like that, to, to to have our branding on show because it's you know millions of pounds going into the this sort of industry, and so him walking out with that batting at three in South Africa was amazing. That was kind of for me the pinnacle and sort of highlight of my my sort of career. Um, and really that was only kind of bettered this summer when Jack Leach, who's, you know, not only went out in a test match, uh, he kind of was involved in, in one of the sort of arguably one of the most like, iconic sort of moments in, in English sport of the, the summer and if not the last sort of decade. Um, and, and he's a personal friend who I've known since he was nine years old. I mean, it just doesn't kind of get any better than that, to be honest. When sort of one of your your friends sort of uh, does that, um, yeah, it's fantastic. So they're my two two key moments. Good, good. Uh, before I ask you the the final question, I probably would say that with knowing you and, and to everybody listening and watching this, um, there was a moment last year when myself and you, as Somerset boys, uh, watched the Somerset um, uh, win the one day final and and, and you having uh, I think it was five or, or six players on on show as well with M and H branded and all and, and all those players having influence during that game. The looking I remember looking at you at the end of it and and, and us two embracing uh, and and uh, and I could just feel the the warmth off you and how radiant and, and how a obviously how brilliant it was that Somerset won a trophy, but how how great it was a spectacle for you, uh, you know, showcasing M and H across a the, the UK um, sport channel as well as um, as well as obviously at Lords. So um, yeah, that was a great experience that I I shared well, with you. So that was a good moment, Tom. I think kind of that that especially you know it didn't quite make the the top list just because it's. It is obviously Somerset. It's kind of um, obviously it's a personal, you know. I, you know, I love Somerset and the guys involved. They're they're friends first and foremost, and I think that's kind of always makes it extra special when it's, you know, that these players are sponsored players. They're like my children to a certain degree. A lot of them <laughs> act like it as well, to be honest. Um, so when they do something great, I mean, you know, you do just feel like a proud parent, really. Um, and I suppose I what's really good about our company now as we're growing, we're getting more and more players. So um, I get to watch them sort of on TV and I get those kind of proud moments, really. Um, and sort of the interactions, yeah, pretty good. Still just about young enough to mix it with them. 
Perfect. So I think Tom's kind of trying to sell himself for the next question. So uh, our last question sort of ties back to the name of the podcast. So who is your favourite global guy? You haven't got to pick me or Tom, although I know Tom was really trying to pull on your heartstrings there a little bit. <laughs> well, so my, my top global guy is a guy who I find fascinating. Uh, and it might surprise you to hear it's Donald Trump. Ah, I absolutely okay. find him fascinating, amusing. I mean, there's not a day goes by he doesn't say something that is just ridiculous. And on, to couple that with just how successful he is. I mean, how has he got to the position he's in now? You just can't help but admire the guy. I mean, I don't agree with anything he ever says. But I just think in terms of kind of entertainment value and a guy who's somehow ended up one of the most powerful blokes in the world, what can I say? He's, he's my man. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if we'll ever have that answer again. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm pretty sure that we might not. We might not. We have to. We have to probably uh, have a fair few um, American uh, guests on podcast to see if we can get the same answer. But uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, um, there you go. it's unusual. Well, but, very yeah. much so. Very well very sold, though. So. I, I believe in your uh, pick. Yeah. Look, it depends what you're looking for, don't you? I mean, if you're serious, if it's a serious guy, then you know, it's. He's not your man, but if you want entertainment <laughs> value, it just doesn't get any better, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Well, Rob, thank you ever so much for, for, for joining us today. Um, uh, for those of you watching and, and, and listening, um, Rob's uh, details will be um, listed on this post. Um, you'll be able to go to uh, www.millerchampionhall.co.uk. Very um, good, Tom. And, um, and yeah, and his details and email address and everything else will be there. Look out for uh, advertisement and fingers crossed when cricket kicks off, look out for, for his brand um, about. Um, but yeah, we'll have all his details. But again, Rob, thank you ever so much for, for joining us today, sharing your story. And um, we'll look forward to following you throughout the, the summer and, and years to come. No worries. Take care, gents. Thanks. Cheers, Rob. <laughs>